Today's teaser, just a little bit different. Since we last recorded, Adam got married. And due to a fairly short engagement, unfortunately I wasn't able to be there or help with any kind of bachelor party stag do for him. And in keeping with the fantastic British tradition of stitching your mates up on their stag do, Boo, you might sound a little bit different in today's episode. I love you and I'm so happy for you and Stephanie wish you every happiness and success for the future and excited for the rest of this journey as we go through the Bible in one year. Love you, fella. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast, brought to you by two Brits and a Bible. If you like the idea of a casual yet meaningful chat about the Bible with a couple of mates, listen in. Something here could be good for you today. Today is day 192, covering Psalms 140, 141, 142, 143, 144 and 145. If you need an overview of those chapters, they are in the description. What have you been up to this week? I got married. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's been an, uh, it's been crazy few weeks actually because we got baptized. Uh, my wife's name is Stephanie. We got baptized together last weekend, and then this weekend got married. So it's kind of funny in our small group. Our small group always at the start is like, "So what have you been up to?" <laughs> and it's like, you know, oh, we got baptized together. Like, oh, that's cool. And then it's like, what are you getting up to next week? Oh, we get married. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. So, so happy. Get, just get married, people. That's what I recommend. If you're to the right, right person. person. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't the answer to everything. No, it's not. Well, congratulations, sure. my man. Absolutely. Congratulations. Um, I had started off, had a quick throwback from yesterday. Psalm 139.1, which I missed, but it was actually a huge part of it. It's, uh, you have searched me and you know me. And it's this whole idea. It's the know it in your know us type thing, which we've chatted about before. Like, <laughs> he knows us better than we know ourselves. Then, like, in verse 7, it's like, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Even the darkness will not be dark to you. It's like, God is in everything that we're doing. I was having that chat with Archie today. He's like, God's, like, right here. God's in my mouth. <laughs> it's like... It's that kind of five-year-old mindset on it, but it's like, yeah, God is everywhere and he knows us, like to be really known. Obviously, you just got married and to know your wife and that is, it just takes on a whole new heavy. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's a little tiny verse, but has such weight to it. Absolutely, absolutely. Couldn't agree more, man. Could not agree more. And what's crazy is that we'll never know each other, like Steffi and I or of, uh, you or, or and anyone that you're in an intimate relationship with anything like that like melody and so on like god knows us yeah that's the crazy thing right we'll never get even close to knowing any other human being anywhere near as much as god knows us yeah it's it's really cool yeah. i got i got nothing for us until psalm 143 i just want to let you know that i'm going to be just riffing off of your things so I apologize for that, people. I had like a shed load of notes to begin with. So, all right, I'll start chatting. Um, yeah. Psalm 140, verse 3. The poison of vipers is on their lips. And I was just like, you've got to be wary of people's words. Like, are they to be trusted? You need to, that's the whole discernment thing again, right? It keeps coming up and it's going to come up a lot through Proverbs as well. Is can you like trust what's being said? words can right. be such incredibly dangerous things like was it the sword is sharper than uh, the tongue is sharper than a sword right or whatever yes um, yeah and then sort of straight out the back of that in 141 3 set guard over my mouth lord keep watch over the door of my lips and it's like in that same way we need to weigh out the words that we're speaking because there's such weight to what we're saying and we need to make sure we're building people up instead of tearing them down in yes. public and behind closed doors because it's so easy to put on this great front but then actually as soon as you're at home just start effing and blinding and cursing and right. thing and all this stuff like, yep. it's, we're so careful with words in general on the in and on the out well that reminds me of when jesus is talking about how it's not what goes into a man that defiles him it's what comes out of a man right yes so it's, it links perfectly to what jesus was saying there um yeah love it i just realized i did have a couple of notes from psalm 139 which I've randomly put into yesterday. So I don't know if that one was yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a chance to say. Yes. So cool. I'm just all over the place yeah, today. So I apologize. Very people. Awesome. But I actually have a pretty good excuse for once. So, yeah. um, all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm enjoying that. Ads, let's keep going, mate. I neither of us have anything from 141, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to jump to 142. Uh, 1427, set me free from my prison that I may praise your name. 
And it's just trying to work out what your prison is. Like it can be different things for different people. Like it could be your thought life. It could be lust. It could be addiction. It could be actual drugs. It could be like whatever your prison is. Right. Like we need to be praying to be set free. Like yeah. asking for that, seeking that. It can happen in an instant. God can work in miraculous ways like that. It could be through counseling. It could be through rehab. It could be through anything. But whatever that prison that is holding us is, we need to be praying to be set free of that. I just had a really cool like image from what you just said as well, which I don't know. I think hopefully is a bit useful. Um, Jesus, obviously, once you're saved, has opened that prison door for you, right? If you then decide to stay wrapped up in that fleshly, worldly desire, sin, etc., the prison door is open and you can go out whenever you want, basically, pretty much, right? But a lot of us will choose to stay within those prison walls for a while with certain things, even though the door is right there and we can just walk through it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, okay, I can finally contribute something. Of, so I'll, within you know, that exact point, we also need to be generous and kind with other people because, like, for me, uh, sexual sin, porn, masturbation, a thing was something that God did for me in an instant. And that was a miracle. I know that other people don't have that same thing. It's something they struggle with. It's something yeah. that I struggle with things that are different to other people. So just because right. it works one way, it doesn't mean that it can be like, oh, you just have to pray and it will be fixed. It's like there's still a right. journey. Um, absolutely. Get what you're saying as well. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Uh, 143 verse two, do not bring your servant into judgment for no one living is righteous before you, basically adding to what you're saying right there, right? Don't judge other people. It reminds me of the um, when Jesus is presented with the uh, the adulteress, right? And they want to stone her to death. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, you who are without sin, cast the first stone, right? Um, I love all that. So anyway, I like that verse for that. It reminded me of that, which I found out recently, apparently, may not actually have been in the original bible it may have been that uh, a scribe added it as an extra little thing so it's a very interesting thing that that little uh cast the first stone bit so oh, anyway so i thought you meant this bit you mentioned here you mean the cast the oh no no yeah in john wherever that is in john yeah. apparently that's contested as to whether that is actually from the original cool looking forward to seeing what the apologetics bible has to say on that as when we get there absolutely uh, 143 for me was 143.7, um, which I was saying, answer me quickly, Lord, my spirit fails. And it seems like David is just regularly mentioning his weaknesses and failings. And I just love that. It feels mm. like we need to be as real and honest as we can before God, like frequently relying on him and asking him for his help and for strength. Because I think sometimes it's like meeting new people. We try and put our best foot forwards as first impressions and as our own image and ego and stuff. And I feel like sometimes we try and do that with God. And of course he just sees right through this. So yeah, it's, um, it's just that whole, just keep going back, keep relying on him. It's yeah, it's cool. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, into 144 uh, verse eight, whose mouths are full of lives at uh, lies, sorry, whose right hands are deceitful. Um, so a deceitful right hand seems to me to be linking almost to like antichrist stuff within this world, right? Because the right hand so often symbolizes Jesus. So the idea of having a deceitful right hand, it's almost like you're being held by the enemy or something like that. So I thought that was a really interesting symbol there. And obviously that is what antichrist really stands for. Um, it's in place of Christ, right? So a deceitful right hand is instead of the truthful right hand, which is Jesus. Yeah. Um, then into 145, uh, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, his greatness no one can fathom. So that's verse three of Psalm 145. Sometimes it's good to stop and actually think about how little we understand God, right? Yeah. His greatness no one can fathom. And obviously it gave me some Job vibes because, you know, Job is like, thinks he knows God quite well, and he does, but then God comes down and answers him. He's like, wow, I don't know anything about you. True, very true. Final little one from me, 145 verse 8, God seems, uh, sorry, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. We talked about this a bit before, actually, though, just that juxtaposition. He wants to give us love all the time, 
he's very slow with his anger yeah we're so lucky to have a god like him yeah so true man love it the only tiny thing i pulled out of 1.5 actually i've pulled out a lot but worth mentioning is 15 you give them food at their proper time and it's just we need to be patient like trust that god will give we have to be patient and get it in our proper time um beauty well tomorrow's reading is psalm 146 to 150 so why don't you be for people pick up your bibles get reading in the meantime, please consider joining us on social media at Two Brits in a Bible and sharing this with someone to help spread the word of God.